What year was that? 1965. Holy sh**. That's amazing. Joe Rogan reacts to a prophecy from 1965 about the fall of America. Check this out. Played it many times, but you need to hear it because it's so wild to watch him say it. You watch him say it in 1984, and well, back then- pull, You pull up the Paul Harvey thing from whenever that was about the devil. Maybe let's play that. Pull that up, because we, I've, I haven't heard that, and I've heard the Bed of the Knob thing. We've played it like five times, at least. Paul Harvey was a news broadcaster. He did a radio show every night, and I'm not sure. I couldn't find a whole lot about like how much of a person of faith he is, but from looking back at our country 80 to 90 years ago, or 80 to 60 years ago, it seems like faith was a lot more intrinsic in terms of- where people were at. We reacted to Hugh Hefner saying that, you know, culturally speaking, that before marriage was just a no-no. Yep. Right? And so I think th I think this is the wave, the fact that guests from the 40s to the 60s, 70s, before the sexual revolution, people were probably more religious. I don't know. I don't know if that means they knew Jesus, but they were. They seemed to be more religious. You know yep. what I mean? Go ahead. And it's Rogan, not good. Hold on. Important to note, Rogan posted this on his Instagram. Really? Yes. Wow. So that's, that's very this interesting. Clip. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. But it also gives us a chance to right the ship. It hasn't hit the rocks yet. Paul Harvey. If I were the devil. Is this the thing? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. If I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four fifths of its population. But I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree. The. So he I said a third of its real estate and four fifths of its population. Was that? I'm just trying to do the numbers. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers, with the wisdom of a serpent. I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, "Do as you please." To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would convince them. So I'm I'm really curious how Rogan feels about that part. Yeah. Right. If I was the devil, I would convince young people that the Bible is a myth, that man created God. Yeah. Right. Because he's he's. I don't know if I've ever heard him say man created God, but he definitely doesn't take the Bible very seriously. Because he's also Joe Rogan is also the children that Paul Harvey is talking about in this, <laughs> which That's is a point. A crazy take. That's a good point. That is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is his generation. What's bad uh -huh. is good, and what's good is square. Mm. And the old I would teach to pray after me. Our Father, which art in Washington. Mm -mm -mm. And then I'd get organized. All I'd the theolytical all people are probably triggered by that. <laughs> all the theolytical people. Go ahead. Authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. <laughs> That's spooky, man. I mean, that's the the opiate epidemic. The opiate epidemic, but people are just doing pills now, casually taking Xanax and doing mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff, right? Molly. Oh, man. Go ahead. If I were the devil, I'd soon have hey, wow. families <laughs> at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. Mm-hmm. Oof, that's your TikToks. Mm -hmm. That's your Instagram algorithms. That's right. It's crazy. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions. Just let those run wild. Wow. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Holy sh... 1965, bro. Uh, and they do... 1965. They got on-campus police. Dog-sniffing... I mean, drug-sniffing dogs. <sighs> metal detectors. Within a decade... I'd have prisons overflowing. Uh. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Uh. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and uh. then from the houses of Congress. And wow. in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure oh. priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were wow. the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter okay. an egg. The whole bit about deifying science, though? Yeah. What has what, what happened the last couple of years, right? We're the experts. We got this. You listen to us. You submit. I mean, Rogan we, Rogan engages a lot in this stuff, yeah. right? So, yeah. 100%. It's like, it's like we have all these clips of Rogan going, uh, it's a myth. Mm -hmm. I can't believe people still believe that nowadays. Da-da-da. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And the symbol of Christmas, a bottle. If I mm. were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted 
until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. That that is probably one of the best bars. If I was the devil, I would take from those who have, yep. give to those who wanted to kill the, those who are ambitious. To take away the incentive for the ambitious. I mean, that is a lot of what our modern fiscal policy is moving towards. Mm -hmm. We're going to democratic socialism. Yeah, democratic socialism. We're going to tax the rich. We're going to de incentivize entrepreneurship, de incentivize small business. And we're going to give to those who feel entitled to get stuff. Crazy. Insane. Well, you bet. I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I mean, that's the, I don't know if folks know that gambling is a, uh, that's, that's it's federally funded. It's federally funded. Or backed, yeah. Something yeah. Like that. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in mm. patriotism, mm. in moral conduct. Vivek Ramaswamy has been pressed on denouncing white supremacy. And the reason why he refuses to denounce it is because he says, What do you mean by that? I denounce racism of all kinds against all people. Yeah. But they're like, No, denounce white supremacy. And he's like, Well, what do you mean by that? Because you can say uh, punctuality, work ethic. Uh huh. In these oh, things. because they make the they make the argument. Yes, yeah, so he said. W what definition are we going? Because if we're going off of Kim D's definition, you're insane. Yeah. Right. If you're going off of racism, I did I denounce race racism against you know every. every I've, 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 he's like he's like I'm not gonna play your game. And so it's interesting. Pull that back. L l listen to what he said. Uh, I would I would go against extremes. And hard work. Hard work. Patriotism. Patriotism. And moral conduct. More kind of all of this has been categorized as, as quote unquote white supremacy. Yeah, patriotism, American nationalist, Christian nationalism, right? And I'm not saying I'm like there's some there's some wild stuff on the Christian nationalist side. I've engaged in some of the conversations. The con some of the conclusions remind me of Handmaid's Tale. But patriotism, hard work has definitely been dismissed as white supremacy. Yep. Right. And what was the other one? It was patriotism, uh, uh, moral conduct, more and moral conduct, moral conduct, uh, meritocracy, moral conduct. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would convince the young that marriage is old fashioned. Woo! That's <laughs> that swinging is more, is more fun. fun. That what you see on TV is the, is way, the to way to be. And thus I could undress you in public. Uh. And I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. <sighs> and this is before the AIDS epidemic. This is crazy, bro. <laughs> in other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Yeah. Watch what year was that? Holy Watch shit. 1965. That's amazing. He spoke. 65. Wow. April 3rd, 1965. Paul Harvey wow. nailed it. Yeah. Wow. So you can you can use devil as a euphemism for anything that you want. Yeah. But, <laughs> what? The, but the results the same, and we're seeing it. We're, we're seeing that. You know, I think they said, what somebody said. He was, he just said, he landed at like, I mean, you could use devil as a euphemism for anything you want. Yeah, that was kind of a weak. No, yeah, but it's like right after this whole thing of like arguing the fact that like, if I were the devil, yep. I would convince you that God doesn't exist. Right, 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 right. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. could use it for whatever you want. Yeah, that was <laughs> a, yeah. That's a, that's crazy. I think, I'm curious, you know, like when you're confronted, and, it, and I, this isn't their channel, but like someone titled it like prophecy. So I'm curious. You know, I don't, I don't know what you call it, a prediction, a prophecy. Yeah. You know, but he's really spot on. Yeah. Very, very, very spot on. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious. And then for Rogan, pull up his Instagram real quick so we can show people that he, he just posted it. I'm, I'm curious, like, how do you, uh, how does he, how does he process all this? You know, I mean, he has to, has to be aware of where things are going, or where things have gone, rather. Right there. Look at that. What does he say? From the recent sailors. Uh, yeah. So he just, he just posted a clip of it. He says, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to... He just yep. posted the original. He says, Mr. Harvey's words describe our current times well. Wow. Although it has been over a half a century since the broadcast, Mr. Harvey's words describe our current times well. The crazy part is... Uh, is back to what we mentioned earlier, is that mm -hmm. like he is the kids that yeah. Paul Harvey's talking about. Yeah, go Google what year was Joe Rogan born. That would have been in the 60s, right? Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I think he's because he's like 50 now. 67. This was said in 65. Yeah, so he's literally he's, he's literally, literally the kids, the kids yeah. that Paul Harvey's talking about. Joe Rogan self-admits that, wow, he hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he would admit, oh, Paul Harvey hit the nail on the head with all of these things, but only through his cultural context of God at the time. Mm -hmm. Or is it reasonable 
to come to the conclusion that like if he's right about all these things, mm -hmm. maybe he was also right about this one part about God and you being convinced yourself yep. that God doesn't exist. God, the Bible being a myth, yeah, taking God out of the the schools, minimizing uh, morality to do yeah. what makes you feel good. But also to this also might be proof that he is is he he says he's not atheist. Right. Yeah, he says he says he, he says I am not an atheist. People always say I am. I am not an atheist. I think that's probably a, probably a, a agnostic. Yeah, probably agnostic. I probably I say I say Rogan's probably agnostic, moving over to theist, mm -hmm. and then hopefully the logical conclusion from there would be from theist to Christian theist. Yeah, and but this might be proof that he's closer to theist than we think, because yeah, maybe. because he's even like fired up about this, and and one I'm sure he's smart enough to understand like, hey, I am the kids in this generation that he's talking to. You think he's smart enough to put that together? I think so. You think so? Maybe. I don't know. I also. Either that or he's just like very um, open minded, but mm -hmm. like in the actual sense mm. enough to be like, oh, I'm going to share this message with the mm -hmm. world because I think it's important regardless of whether I fully believe it or not. Because mm. I think he's I think he's like kind of unbiased enough to, to do that. Mm -hmm. But it could be you could make the case that it's that it's him moving more to deism in some sort of sense of that he's comfortable with the idea of being wrong about it because he was tricked into believing that. Yeah, I mean the hippies and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. God is everything but the God of the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. God is everything but, but, but the God of the Bible. You know, God's whatever you want it to be, man. God is whatever you want it to be. But it's a start just the position from him years ago. Saying, oh, huge, saying, huge, it's huge a myth. How could, could you believe in fairy tales and all? Huge stuff? exposition. So I'm, yeah, I'm, again, the more I hear him reference this sort of stuff, I'm curious if he's kind of like trolling us a little bit. Like if he's like, I don't think leaning into it. You I don't know? think he's trolling. You no. don't think there's a consensus out there that like enjoy him talking about God and like channels like ours. I don't think he it. looks at. I don't even think he looks at analytics. Oh, okay. In the slightest. Like you don't for, think he catches wind of any of the Christian reaction stuff that's made. No. Okay. I, I mean, maybe maybe he like catches the wind of it, but I don't think he's entertained by it. Okay. I think if anything, he's like, oh, that's cringe. From what I've heard in his podcast, like mm -hmm. listening to some of his stuff in long form, mm -hmm. doesn't sound like he he's on social media much at mm -hmm. all, if not mm -hmm. anything, um, more than just like to to do a one off post. It doesn't sound like he. Uh, it sounds like Jamie does everything. Mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like he engages with any sort of content creation, hmm. and it sounds like he's got enough on his plate that he's kind of in retirement mode vibes. Jeez. He's just like, I'm going to go elk hunting. I hang out with my kids. I'm going to do my podcast. I love doing my podcast. And I have a comedy store. Huh. Like, I don't think it's that deep. So I do, unlike Lil Nas X, mm -hmm. I do think when he's sharing something, it's his genuine take and mm -hmm. not like the content creator mm -hmm. side of him. Hmm. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.